What's up guys, the Legends Ultimate Arcade is an awesome piece of equipment and in true form at games has allowed its users to add their own content to the cabinet. Because of some people, 350, 350 included, included games, games or an additional 48, 48 arcade, arcade net, net games, games just aren't enough. And there's a lot of resources out there for people who want to just download the files put them on the system and play them. But for those of you who want to curate your own collection or to actually see the process of how UCE files are created, this is the video for you. I'm gonna go step by step and showing you what to do with your ROMs from beginning to end. And I have to give a huge shout out and thank you to BP, TNT2 Gamer, and Jason Fancher. Without their help and patience, I could not have made this video. Let's get started. To access these games, you want to go to the BYOG section, and you'll see a few options here. You have Add-on, Add-on X, and CoinOps X. Ignore the Add-on option. It is outdated. It was replaced by Add-on X. There's no reason for you to use this first option. What you see on the screen here are the tools and the files to get this working. I'll have links to everything in my description except for the arcade ROMs. I cannot provide those to you. You have to locate those yourself. So we have the Add-on tool the add-on X tool, our Libretro SO files, which are core files, your arcade ROMs, and the UCE batch build starter kit. There's two ways to create UCE files. You can do it one by one manually, or by following the starter kit, you can do multiple at once, and that's what I recommend. It saves a lot of time. But I'll show you both ways. The first step is to open up the add-on tool. For the steps in creating a single UCE package, the first thing we want to do is put in the game title. We'll demonstrate with 1942. This next option is asking for the location for your box art. Click the choose file button, navigate to wherever you keep your box art. It has to be in PNG format for this to work. Highlight it, then click open. Next up we have bezel art. Once again, hit choose file, navigate wherever you keep your bezels. The bezel art is the art that appears in game. Next, we have to choose what emulator core we're going to use with this game. The best practice when finding your arcade ROMs is to select from a specific ROM set. These ROM sets are created to work with a specific core. For example, the MAME 0.78 ROM set works with the MAME 2003 core. The MAME 0.139 set works with the MAME 2010 core. And the MAME 0.37B5 set works best with the MAME 2000 core. I got my games from the MAME 0.78 set, so we're using the MAME 2003 core. So once again, hit the choose file button. We're going to navigate to the libretro folder on our desktop. Here's the MAME 2003 core. And last but not least, we have to select our game ROM. Once again, choose file. When you first open up your games folder, you may not see any games here, and that's because it's looking for bin files. When you click this drop down menu, you want to choose the any file option and then your games will appear. Make sure that you keep your games zipped. You do not unzip arcade games to get them to work. Keep them in zip format. And do not rename them, that's very important. They have to remain named just like this. Here's our 1942 zip. Click open. Now that all the categories are filled, our last step is to hit the build package button. I prefer to put the UCE file in the original folder where my ROM is at. Once you're done, hit save. And after a few moments, you'll get this notification saying that the package file is now ready. If we open up our arcade games folder, we now have our UCE file. Now we can copy this file, put it on the root of our flash drive or whatever storage you're using. Remember the drive letter. Now we can use the add on X tool. Very simple to use. Just hit the choose button, select your flash drive, click OK and click build. After a few seconds, you'll get the notification that the UCE was successfully built and you are done. When it's completed, your flash drive should look like this with an add-on X folder and your UCE files. So if you're using the add-on X feature, that's all you have to do. You're ready to go. But creating UCE files one by one is very time consuming and I recommend doing it in batches using this starter kit. If you notice on the add-on tool, you have the option for multiple packages. When clicking that, it asks for a CSV file. If you're like me, you have no idea what a CSV file is. Turns out it's a file opened up by Microsoft Excel, so make sure you also have Excel installed on your computer. We're going to open up the batch build starter kit, and we have a folder for bezel art, box art, emulator, packages, and ROMs. Your bezels will go into the bezel art folder. They do have to be in PNG format. Same with your box art. In this emulator folder, this is where you want to put your Libretro SO files. The packages folder is where your completed packages will go. And the ROMs folder is where you're going to keep your game ROMs. We also have two Excel files at the bottom. One compatible with the 2003 version of Excel and the second to be used on the newest version of Excel. 
When we open it up, we're greeted with Jason's how-to section. If you prefer to go by a written tutorial, this is an excellent source. This is what I used to create all my files and the resource I'm using for this video. It's very in-depth. It goes step-by-step. Step. This is a wonderful resource. The first thing you got to do is click on the ROM list tab here at the bottom. It's going to ask for your copied ROM file paths. To do that, go into the folder where you're keeping your games. You can individually highlight which ones you want to add, or you can highlight the whole group. Using this method, you can do up to 200 at a time, and then click Copy Path. Back on the Batch Build Sheet, go into the second row, right-click, and Paste. Now you should see the locations of each ROM that we copied here. Now go down to the UCE Batch Build tab. You'll notice that our games are highlighted in red. That means we have not selected an emulator that correlates with these games. In the next column over, you have this drop-down menu with a list of various arcade cores. We got our set that works with MAME 2003, so we're going to select MAME 2003 Plus. And now that game is no longer highlighted in red. You can right-click this box and copy, and then drag the rest of the empty rows here, right-click, and paste. And now all our games are no longer highlighted in red. If your game name changed to this MAME lookup unknown, don't worry about it. We're going to take care of that later. You'll see in the next few columns we have our ROM names, as well as box art and bezel art. You'll notice the names of the bezel art, box art, and ROMs are all the same. It has to remain just like this. All three of these files need to be, have the exact same name. If you don't have your own bezel art, you can click this box to use all generic bezels, or you can use these checkboxes on the side to assign them to specific games. Once you've assigned the emulator, you're basically done. Make sure you're still on the UCE Batch Build tab. Go up to the Office button. Click Save As. Under Save As Type, Save it under CSV, delimited. Yours may look a little bit different from this. It may say something like UTF-8. That is the selection you want to pick. Change the name of your file, then click Save. You may get a couple pop-ups asking you different things. Just click Yes on any option. If we return to the Batch Build folder, you'll see we have our CSV file, but we're still not done yet. Open up our new CSV file in Excel, and the information we entered on the Batch Build Excel file is right here. This is where we're going to fix the MAME lookup unknown issue. Highlight your ROM names over here, click copy, and then paste them into this column. Now all names are exactly the same. Last thing we need to do is highlight the package names one more time. Hold Control and hit H. This will give us the find and replace option. In the find what box, enter dot zip. Keep the replace with box empty. Then click Replace All. You'll get the notification that Excel has completed its search and has made five replacements. Click OK, and then Close. You'll see 1942 got moved over. That's because Excel has this weird thing with dates. It'll push it over to the right side. Fix that, just click this option over here, and it's moved back. Now you want to save these changes one more time. So hit the Save file at the top. Once again, the Save As Type should be CSV, Delimited, and then give it a name. Click Save when you're finished. You can close out your Excel file, and now it's time to use the add-on tool once more. This time we're going to select the multiple packages option. Click open and choose the CSV file that you made. Click open one more time, then build package at the bottom. I didn't add any box art, so that's what these warnings are, but it's still saving the UCE file successfully. When it's all finished, you'll get these notifications at the bottom of the log, how many were successful and how many failed, and then the done message. Close the add-on tool. If we go back into our batch build folder, and in the Packages folder, we now have our UCE files, all created for us in one big batch. Now you're going to take all these files and once again put them on the root of your flash drive. Here they are, and then again we have to convert them with the Add-on X tool. Once again, hit the Choose button, choose your USB drive, hit OK, and then Build. We got the done message at the bottom, we can close this out, and now we are ready to go. The last option of playing these games on the Legends Ultimate Arcade is with the CoinOps X feature. CoinOps has been around for a long time. They make the greatest front end for your arcade games. I highly recommend this feature. It's very, very nice. And what's nice is that you can use both the Add-on X feature and the CoinOps feature together with the same flash drive. For the CoinOps X feature on the root of your flash drive, right click, create a new folder. Name that COX. In the CX folder, you want to create five more folders. You want Cover, Logo, Marquee, Vert, and Video. To get the files associated with these folders, I highly recommend you find the CoinOps low spec build, or you can use CoinOps Next. You can find out how to get these builds going to the CoinOps Discord. Here I have the low spec MAME 2003 build. I navigated to Collections, Arcade, and Medium Artwork, and we have these same folders right here. If we open up the Cover folder, 
we have our cover art. Same with logo, marquees, vert borders, which are actually kind of hard to see here, but if you look real close, they have a generic coin slot image on the right side. You won't have a vert image for every game. Those are for the vertical scrolling games like 1942. And videos. Just collect the content you want from these folders and put them on the corresponding folders on your flash drive. Now any changes you make to your flash drive, you have to run the add-on X tool again. Whether you're adding more art to the COX folder or more games, you have to run that any time you make changes. And that's it. You can safely remove your flash drive from your PC, plug it into one of the USB ports on the Legends Ultimate Arcade, and start her up. You can put in your flash drive in the left or right ports, it doesn't matter which one. You'll see a little indication in the top right saying that it's inserted. Then head over to the BYOG section. When we hit the A button on the Add on X section, you're going to push down twice until you get to the root of the flash drive. And here are the games that we added. I didn't put any box art on here, so we got the generic box art. But if we hit A on one of the games, you can see it loads up perfectly with the bezel art that we added. You have the same menu options with the add-on games as you do with the games native to the system. Now we're going to check out the CoinOps X option. This is the preferred option for me. It does take a few extra steps to get it running, but to me, it's worth it. Because this is what you get with CoinOps X. You can see we have the logos over on the right, the cover art behind the logos, the video preview, the vert option for 1942. And I love the marquee art because if you wait a little bit, It'll blink. Really, really nice added feature. Startup X-Men. And here it is, started up just fine. We got that awesome bezel art included. And that's all there is to it. If you guys have any trouble with any of these, make sure you go to the CoinOps Discord for support. At Games doesn't offer any troubleshooting or support for the third-party apps like CoinOps, so you have to go to their Discord if you need any help. And that's all I got for you guys. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. This is the part of the video where I thank those users who support the channel through YouTube memberships and Patreon. Jordy Alex, Rick67, Travis Morton, John Westby, Mike Muniz, Sam Torres, Yaroslav Orudzov, Dor, Andre G, Den Cardoso, Jason Hallbrooks, Magnesium Winterjuice, Craig Livesley, Geode, James Burkhart, Eric Sandberg, and Batman.